Welcome to Comfort Habit number two. This is part two. I was supposed to stop a long time ago. It is now five o'clock in the afternoon at the time of this filming. So I'm going to go ahead and make a part two because I went off on a random story or two about how fucked up shit is because people have black belts and how people don't. Honestly, to be, to be frank with y'all, you know, again, the belt is a system of control. It is a system that you will have to accept. And it is a system that you will work hard to get your belt. I'm not saying don't do that. It's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying I personally hate the belt system. I also don't like the fact that a lot of things that you think you know about martial arts, you don't. And a lot of people that y'all are following because nobody's really following me outside of the 162 people here that I love so much. You're not being told the truth. All right. You're not being told it. When you get hit, boom, that shit fucking hurts. When you get in the arm bar, that shit fucking hurts. They're not teaching you reality of, you know, you don't have to let somebody take the arm. You don't. When they're taking the arm, you can roll with it. And you're going to take and change guards and, you know, boom, start using your fucking knees. That's what they're fucking there for. If you're laying in the fetal position and you are getting your ass whooped, let's see. Now that's covered in bird shit. And I don't have a mat or anything I can lay on. And that's covered in bird shit. Okay, here's what you do. When you go watch a BJJ match, I want you to see how many times somebody takes the arm and tries to make somebody tap by hyperextending the elbow. And why that person is steadily fighting to keep that arm, that they don't roll with it and start dropping knees into the body. Now maybe it's against the rules. So I could be wrong. If it's against the rules, now I know. Now, I don't know if it's against the rules or not, but in the Army, when they taught me how to side mount someone to grab the arm and then take both of my legs, one goes across their, their throat and one goes across their chest as I'm pulling and clenching my legs and pulling their arm, you know, if, if it's against the rules for you, as I'm putting the hyper arm extension onto you to try to unsnap your arm or snap your elbow or whatever the fuck, if it's against the rules for you to take and roll over and keep that arm and drop an elbow in my stomach while I'm trying to do shit, that's on you, and that means those rules fucking suck. Okay? Straight up, those rules fucking suck. And you should probably pick a different fucking martial art. As a street fighter, I know for a fact if you got this arm and you got me in a fucking Fujiwara or a Yuganagi and you twisting me up, I'm not just going to lay there and let that shit happen. If my body is next to yours and you're right here, you're like right here, you're pulling me back, boom, boom, I'm going to put my body to work. I'm not just going to let you keep doing this shit so you can tap me out. No, fuck that shit. I'm going to fight until I can't. See that dark side of me coming out? This is not really a dark side. This is just, you got to accept the fucking truth. You're twisting my arm all out of socket. My arm wasn't meant to go that way because you're trying to get a tap. I'm going for a fucking knockout. Boom! I'm elbowing you all up in this bitch right here. If I can get you in the forehead, boom! 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 You still got my arm. Mm, mm. I'm not going to stand there and just let that shit happen. But a lot of you athletes do that shit. Fuck that shit. If you got me in some kind of lock and I can get my body into a position where I can kick you in the face or anywhere, I'm doing that shit. If you hyperextended my elbow and I roll over so I am now on top, you better believe every fucking knee I got, I'm throwing. Both of these motherfuckers is driving into your body. All of this shit is a fucking target. If you're on top of me and we're up here, and you're trying your best, and because you're about to go through. You're about to put your foot over here and over here. And I'm about to be tapped the fuck out. No. No, I'm not. Because if I'm in the fucking fetal position, and you're on top of me, pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling, these knees, you're getting them. I'm sorry. Might be it's against the rules. But in the street fight, oh, fuck no. You're getting these fucking knees. And this hand is free while I'm trying to keep it. While you're yoking that bitch, I'm grabbing your fucking hand. Now, your hands are pulling on my hand, and you about to transfer your feet. Now, if you're strong with me, I got to roll with you, because when you pull this arm, I'm rolling with your ass. And then I'm going to pick you up, and I'm going to slam you, if I can pick you up. If I can't, my knees are going into your body. I'm doing everything I can to prevent you from having me laying on my back 
and you hyperextended my shit. But when y'all watch those videos, y'all don't see that, right? Because those motherfuckers weren't trained to do that. Those motherfuckers don't know that they can do that. Because for some reason, they start panicking and they forget that, you know, I got another arm. I got legs. Why am I not using my legs? When you're up there, why ain't, like, fully extending my legs and trying to kick you to keep you the fuck off? And then y'all wonder why I'm always shitting on BJJ. Because, see, when I was in the Army, and they put us in, I know the positions they can put you on. I don't know the names of them. I know one is top guard, one is side mount, or side guard and top mount, whatever the fuck it is. You know, with their bodies over top of me, and I'm done somehow got into this position where I'm on my back and they're trying to take this arm. And I gotta lock my arm with this grip versus this grip versus this grip, whatever grip I'm using, and you're trying to take my arm. The army never said I couldn't use my knees, but they wouldn't let me. You know, and when I had to be paired with the guy that's 300 pounds and like every bit of 6'5, you know, I couldn't roll him off me with the C clamp and the roll because you're supposed to roll him in that way because you can C clamp him and grip him, but they said that can break your thumb. So what they want you to do is C clamp him and roll this way instead of trying to roll the other way. And I couldn't get that big burly bastard off me. But when they weren't looking, I slid my hands under his legs and grabbed him by the back of his thighs. Bam! Head butt him in the shit. To that brother of mine from Delta. I'm sorry. It had to be done. He was bigger than me. And this is the thing you gotta understand about fighting. If you're learning martial arts, you need to learn martial arts. You need to learn all the possibilities. And why everybody's gonna be coming at me for this shit, because none of them are actually thinking, what if Echo is actually right? What if he's telling us some shit that we need to know and we just like stuck on our ego and we don't want to fucking believe him and we don't want to do what he says. But why don't y'all go back and watch all these fights with Ken Shanrock and Hoist Gracie and see why uh, they never used the knees and shit. How Hoist cheated and um, choked Ken with the, um, with the belt. You know, see y'all don't think about shit like that. Gi or no gi. In the streets ain't none of that shit gonna matter. And in the streets, I'm not letting you take me to the ground. I don't give a flying fuck how skilled you are with BJJ or any other fucking martial art. You're going to earn any ass whooping that you throw at me. Unless you catch me sleeping or you're skipping in the street like a little girl while I'm driving the car and trying not to hit you. Unless you catch me sleeping, you gonna have to earn, earn, earn this fucking fight. Understand that shit. You are going to have to earn that shit. If you don't learn how to earn it, then you're going to lose. But you're going to earn it with me. You're not just going to be given this fucking fight. You are going to earn every fucking ounce of this shit. All 125 pounds of problem, you're going to earn that shit. Because a lot of people that you follow, they don't show you when shit goes wrong. They don't tell you the possibility of shit going wrong. Go back and watch me. Go back and watch all the people that are showing you how to put people in all these locks. Why don't you ask them questions? Like, so what happens if this doesn't work? You don't see anybody explaining what happens when this shit doesn't work. Now, ask yourself, why is that? Why is Echo Fang Grey Wolf the only one that's willing to tell you what happens when this shit doesn't work? Because some of this shit just doesn't fucking work. Period. There are martial arts that are going to fail at some point because of training, because of you not putting everything in. I'm not saying everything is going to fail you. What I'm saying is no one tells you what happens to you when it does. No one. None of the big name guys, none of the people who are more popular than me tell you what happens when it doesn't. The loser doesn't come on TV busted up and bloody and start making a, a, a factual opinion of what he did wrong to get fucked up. Like I like to tell people, with the exception of one, because somebody pointed it out to me, I'm not going to say who you are, but you are right. But for me, there is no such thing as a useless martial art except for the no-touch knockout, because that's what a guy came at me with when I was on TikTok doing that. But he literally came up to me and says, what about no-touch knockout? That shit never dawned on me. Because I didn't believe that people still believed in No Touch Knockout. I didn't believe people believed that shit. I, I, look, as an actor, and you make movies, ah, do you get it? You know, and you didn't see any blast because my computer would have been destroyed. If I really could do that, I'd take it out this way. Boom, you know. Maybe shoot that damn bird that keeps flying by. Maybe shoot that fucking bee that keeps coming back. But 
I can't do that. This is real life. If I could do that, believe me, I would not really share that with anybody outside of the United States military because they would probably be the ones hunting me down. I don't remember the name of the movie. Um, something about an artifact that these four kids found. There was a black kid, three white kids, and at the end of the movie, they had to fight each other. Hold on. Google is your friend. Let's see how much of a friend Google is. Google, what's the name of the movie where the four kids found the alien artifact and became superheroes? It is not for, there it is, Chronicles. Go watch the movie Chronicles. Because Chronicles will tell you about what I just said. With being able to shoot powers and shit like that. But in reality, I haven't seen anybody do it. I'm not going to say Chief Force doesn't exist. I'm just going to say that until it's done to me, I'm not going to believe it. So when you're watching these videos, and Rob will break them down for you. When you're watching these videos about No Touch Knockouts... I'm not going to fall for that shit until it's actually done to me. If I get ready to throw a punch at you and you can freeze my body with a singular look, like you magneto the shit out of me, your mind is weak. I'm sorry, that was Professor Xavier. You got metal in your body, so your left leg will be heavier than hell and you can't, you can't lift it because there's a big metal spike in my ass because I had a hip replacement. So if they can manipulate that shit so that I can't move my left leg, I still got a right leg, motherfucker. And if you can't pull metal out of me when I jump through the air, then you got a problem. Now, as far as the no-touch knockout, if I'm going to throw a punch and you, this is the knockout that you've been looking for, and I literally get knocked out, and I know that it's really happening, then you got me dead to rights. Now, because then I'm going to believe that shit. Now, I'm going to tell you why I do believe that she does work. I tell you guys this story before where I had to fight a guy that was three times my size, and he had help. And my left hand felt like it was on fire, like I was about to pull a Terry Bogart's burning knuckles. And this was before that comic, cartoon, or video game even existed. Or at least I think it was. Let's find out. Because this happened in 88, 89, somewhere in there. Let's find out. What year did the Terry Bogart video game come out? I don't think that's right. This says 2010. Bogart was created way before that. Yeah, 1991. Yeah, this happened before the 90s because I was in the eighth grade when this shit happened. And I, in 91, 92, I think I was in the 10th grade because I graduated in 93. So, ain't this some shit. Yep, never mind. He hauled ass. I don't know where the hell he's going. But it definitely hauled ass, and that means I'm gonna have to put mothballs under my shed. It was a groundhog. So, my head felt like it was on fire. This has only happened three times in my lifetime, and that was the very first time. And it happened a couple more times after, but they weren't in those situations. You know, they were in a different situation where I was just training, and it felt like my hand was on fire. And then the other one was when I was doing Qigong, where both my hands would be on fire. So, if you count the times where I see horses in my thumb, in my middle finger that were bit by a horse when I was seven burn, this is why I question chi power, but I don't question its existence because of the hand burning thing. But you know, nothing is impossible. But until somebody hadoukens the fuck out of me, I'm not going to say that you have the ability to shoot anybody. But you have other ways that chi can probably manifest but I'm pretty sure it's not going to, um, you know, manifest in a blast. But if your hand catches on fire, I know I can't be the only one. But it felt like my hand literally was on fire and I could not hit set opponent's partner. Which is why I took it out on him with my golf clicks to his face. So, you know, and this isn't a brag and I'm just telling you how the shit happened. As, as my memory puts it, compared to what other people told me about how many times I took a left blow to the guy versus what I remember. I remember only throwing three left punches. I don't even remember throwing the right hand at all. But I remember throwing three lefts. Boom, boom, boom. You know, all of them to his midsection. I never hit him in the face other than when I kicked him that first time. 
and when I kicked him with my cleeks with the pendulum kick. Other than that, I don't remember throwing any other than those three left punches. And when I got grabbed, and I went to throw the punch, and my hand would not release. I was trying everything, and my hand just would not go. And the person holding me, it was hanging on to me, and he had grabbed my foot, and he was trying to pull me. And I said, nope, if this big motherfucker gets me on the ground, I'm a dead man. So I just took my foot and went to his face. And I learned from that that you don't go down. I don't give a fuck. If you go down, you don't go down long. Roll, do something, get to your feet, get your cognition together. And a lot of people don't know about that. Because when you're in a fight, yo, everything is happening everywhere at the same time, all at once. And you're focused on that one person that you're fighting. Try getting jumped. Then you have to put your focus everywhere. So like I said, you know, you have to understand how fighting works. A lot of these martial artists that you are following, because not a lot of people are following me, because I'm a truth teller. A lot of people that you are following, you might chap their lips. A lot of people that you are following aren't telling you the dark side of martial arts. They literally aren't telling you shit. Which is again, you gotta give it up to Rob from McDojo Life because he does give you the good and the bad and the ugly. But, you know, I'm not gonna keep giving him shout outs. He doesn't shout me back, but, you know, hi Rob. But the point of the matter is, you know, there's good and bad in martial arts. Y'all might not like the fact that I don't like the bout belt system and that I talk about it all the time. You might not like the fact that I put down BJJ all the fucking time. Why do I put this shit down? Because I watch shit. And if you are not a tactitional fighter, you are going to get fucked up every time. And why is that? Because somebody has failed you as a teacher. If I am on my back and I am not kneeing you while you're on top of me in a side mount or a tap mount, then I fucking get, didn't get taught something. Somewhere along the line, I didn't get taught something, I don't remember something, or someone failed to tell me that you don't have to lay there and take that shit, and you don't. If I'm on top of you and I'm frogged out, you know, for those who don't know what the frog stretch is, I'm frogged out. So I'm on top of you sideways, frogged out. I'm going to transition, I'm going to grab your arm, and I'm going to put this foot across your throat, and this foot across your chest, as I reel back and lock your legs in my legs, excuse me, lock your arm in my legs, and I'm going to reel back and crank on your arm. I'm going to crank on this bitch until you tap. There's no reason to hell, while if you don't have the strength to not allow that, that you don't have the cognition to roll with that shit. And so you can quickly transfer from holding my arm because my arm's already in a position where I'm in deep shit, but I rolled over top. Boom, boom, boom. I'm not going to lay there and let you break my fucking arm. I'm going to do whatever I have to. Boom, 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 boom. I just went from bottom to top, but you're still cranky, which means two things. Both of your arms are on my arm, which means... The second thing, your head's not protected, and I'm going to break that motherfucker. That being said, I'm going to end this video because people are about to get in my nerve and get on my case. But remember, there's good and bad in martial arts. Sometimes the bad ain't that bad. It's just shit that you need to know that people are not telling you because they don't want you to know because they don't want you to win. and They don't want you to survive. I'm not here to teach you how to win. I'm here to teach you how to survive. And if we're on the ground and we're tussling and you got me in that motherfucking arm bar where you're about to break my elbow against your knee or some shit, I'm rolling over. So I took the tension off my arm. You're still pulling it, but now I have more of my arm. It's not as locked in your legs as it was before. I can pick you up and slam you. I can pick you up and slam you on my fucking knee. I can roll over and start dropping elbows where you're holding me at. Because if you're holding it up here... I can squeeze my elbow in here and just start dropping that shit in there. My knees are at your side. I can start throwing knees to your side. I can start throwing elbows to your fucking head. There's a lot I can do while you're trying to hold my fucking arm. Go watch those rest, those fights. Not wrestling. Go watch those um, BJJ fights and, and see if anybody does that shit. See if anybody uses, utilizes their elbows or their knees when they're about to get in an armbar. 
I'm pretty sure you won't find one video of somebody doing that shit. And if you do, tag me so I can go find it. Or put it in the comments so I can go find it. That being said, I'm Echo Fan Grey Wolf. This is Comfort Havoc number two. And this is part two. BC and you. This is the final video so I can post.